Hello YouTubers, um, I recently completed a vector illustration of the Honda CRF 250L. I really love this bike, which is why I based my design on it. And also just so I could see um, how this new program performs. Uh, the program I was using is Affinity Designer. I mean, I love this program. It's like, it's awesome. It's fast, professional. Uh, it's really easy to use, and uh, I picked it up quite quick. Um, you can see all this is, uh, I suppose, a little bit similar to some other programs. Um, so I kind of knew where everything was. Um, so yeah, so super uh, easy to pick up. Uh, definitely check it out. So um, basically today I want to show you um, an overview of how I made the bike some of the techniques I used, you know, I want to break down little parts as well, show you how I shaded it or use the gradient or pen tool and all that sort of stuff. Uh, I might do more videos in the future, uh, maybe a couple of tutorials and stuff. Um, I'll show you nesting as well. I think that's, uh, I don't know if that's the professional term for it, uh, you know, for this program, but that's the one I'm going to use because uh, that was really useful, because I started off by not doing nesting, and it was a pain in the ass, I'm telling you. Um, but I found a YouTube video uh, stating how to do it, and uh, finally I got it. So I'll just start off by showing you, zoom in a bit, on different areas, so you can see uh, the detail I've put into this. Like, I put a lot of time in here, and I learned a lot about the program whilst I was doing it. So it was a bit of... Uh, learning on the job, so to speak, about with this uh, Mac Affinity designer. So I'll start off with the tail. You can see I've uh, gone into quite a lot of detail here. Um, didn't blend everything because I think it sort of looks cool if uh, you leave it as blobs <laughs> like this. Not professional terms I'm using today, obviously. Um, but in others, like here, this is the back plastic. You can see I've used a lot of shading um, and use of like lights and darks to try and make it look kind of real. Like if you zoom out, it looks a bit more real when you go in, I suppose. Uh, depends how good you are to make it look real. But um, yeah, so uh, as you can see, I've used the line tool a lot. I wanted to use the line tool on this one, so it didn't look, com I mean, I didn't want to make it too completely real, but I just wanted to, uh, you know, give it that definition and those hard lines. Um, so, zoom out a bit. So, going around to the exhaust, see the end cap there. You can make some really cool effects with this program, um, just all using gradient tools and all these different techniques. But I'll just quickly, briefly fly over this bike for you. Um, get onto here. This was a bit of a pain in the ass to do. Uh, all these, I, think I used to use so many layers on this, it's ridiculous. Um, so I'll just briefly fly over for you, so you can see the de detail I've put into here. Um, with some of them, obviously, I sort of, I'd make one of these, and then I'd just kind of copy and paste it here to here. And you know, just sort of turn it around so it didn't look like I was just, you know, using the same without messing around with it. Uh, all right, see so here, rear brake, engine part. Some really cool effects you can make on this. Um, zoom out a little bit more. This is the bit I'm most impressed with. Because um, I was able to do it with pretty much, like, no knowledge of the program. Just before this one I just did a simple flat kind of cartoony design. This is my previous design uh, made on Affinity Designer. As you can see it's quite simple and definitely different to the bike. Um, and then I thought I was going to do the same with this design uh, when I started but after doing this section here it was flat and I thought oh, I'll try and make it a little bit more 3D to make it look more cool, you know. And then I realized just after a few simple things I did here that it actually ended up looking kind of cool. Like, uh, so it kind of dawned on me, oh, I have to do the whole bike like this now. Well, I didn't have to, but you know, it sort of spurred me on. So that's why I ended up doing the rest of it a bit like that. 
So you can see the fork here. It's like that golden sort of uh, metal sort of look to it. Same with you all the way down here. So I just ended up doing the whole thing like that. And just breaking each little part down and thinking, you know, I'm going to concentrate on this bit today. Uh, try and make it look kind of cool. And uh, try and learn more about the program. So I didn't do any blending or Gaussian blurs on this bit because I think it kind of works as it is with this one here. Um, that you see the amount of layers I'm using is like insane on this. Um, but you'll realize that it's actually really easy to do. Uh, what a bit haven't I got over? I think that's it, isn't it? So now I'm going to show you um, the layers on the side here, um, how it all came together. Um, so I've sort of broke it down like into sections, like the fuel cap here. I'll just show you a close-up of that. So I'll just um, so I've got the top part, got a stroke, black stroke around here, and inside that one is different sections of it that make the whole thing the way it is. So I've used this shape here and I've just made a gradient along here and I've got another section that I've nested in there just with a bit more shade again and the actual full thing in the background I've got another gradient there going from grey to darker grey um, and the same goes with the bottom part and so if you want to see let's see how I did this little gradient one. So I'd nest that shape within the main shape that has the uh, stroke around it. And as you can see the blue lines, that's what it is. So it's actually going outside of there. That's what the nesting uh, is. I just go to fill. I chose gradient. I went to all these different colors. So if I go to this here, the fill tool, you can see how it changes the different colors and you can move these around and if you go here see that correlates to that one that to that one and so on and so forth um, yeah super easy to do um, let me close that one up choose something else on the bike um, I didn't always use these uh, gradient tool uh, I'll try and show you an area where I used just different shapes and I used a Gaussian blur. So I'll try find the forks, front forks. Here we go. Yeah, as you can see there's like layer upon layer. Um, Alright, so let me choose something in the middle here. All right, so this bit down here. There's a little line that goes around here, a little bit of shading uh, on a photo I looked at of the bike. And so basically I just, um, I just made this shape, uh, solid shape, chose the color up here. And I simply like right clicked and then I went to layer effects and then you see this the Gaussian blur, so I just sort of up that a little bit to 0 0.5 pixels. And that blended it in a bit, so it could look like a shadow. And I did the same kind of thing for a lot of other little bits here. So this one, I made a shape, and uh, I put gradient on it, just like I was uh, explaining before. And then I used the Gaussian blur, so that's just another little shape. and. Uh, you could see just for these ones here, nested that one in there, and there's just a whole bunch of those things going on there. Um, see if I can get to this bit here. Uh, that's it. And you see some of them are just under other layers and so on and so forth. Anyway, I won't concentrate too much on that part. 
go and close that up. Um, yeah, let's go over to the engine. If I can find that in here somewhere. Um, outline engine. All right, this section here. Got the main outline around the main piece, and everything else is nested inside there. So again, I just uh, I drew around a shape, used the Gaussian blur, and added that there. And the same is with all these parts. You see that bit there? I drew that, put a little bit of Gaussian blur on there. Underneath is the white part. Same thing with that. And there's just all these little bits that seem to make up this. Uh, this big thing I'm doing. So just like this one here, you see that's one whole full layer. And then I used a gradient tool just for that extra little bit there. Was it a gradient tool? Let me just have a look. Oh no, I just made another shape. I put Gaussian blur on it, nested it within this shape here, and then that's what gives that effect. Um, another thing as well I want to show you, you know, is you can make <coughs> a shape and so say this massive shape here, <coughs> the front brake disc, I made a shape and then I made other little shapes on top. So these ones here, so I just stuck them all around here, including these bits. And then I used this tool, uh, which is up here, where you can minus, you can subtract. So once you've got these little circles here, you basically have to select the main the main shape and then all the other little shapes you so you select them all down here you know like uh, like that um, like select them all like that and then you press the subtract and then it will make that big shape with all these holes in it so if you want to see a background that's how that happened and you can still use the gradient tool and everything on it and it, it won't go over those holes sorry I've got a bit of a cold today so that's why I keep sniffing and Basically, you can see, you know, as I explained with that one, I used, either used a gradient tool or I just used uh, blurred these other tools. Uh, sorry, blurred uh, the shapes I was using and nested them within a main shape, and uh, I just kept doing that the whole way around the bike. There's another shape I did, cut out that little bit, like I explained about the brake disc. And uh, yeah, I mean that's pretty much how I did the whole thing. Uh, I'll show you a few little techniques I found were really useful when doing all of this. Um, so I'll go over to that now. Some of the techniques I used that were really helpful in creating my Honda design. Um, uh, nesting, gradients, all that jazz. All right, let's start off by, let's make like one of the, one of the nuts or screws that went on the bike. So simply choose the ellipse tool, just a circle basically. I'll hold down shift to make it to keep it round, otherwise it does all this. So hold that. Alright, we've got shape now. Go up to stroke, make it black. Now I've got a black outline. You can play around with the width here of the stroke. So I'll make it like that. Now I want there to be a color inside. How do I do that? I go to fill up here. I'll choose some kind of gray. So let's make it kind of that. That'll do. So you can either have it solid or like this, or you can have a gradient. So I'll go to the gradient tool. To make it, to give it that round kind of effect, I go to type and I'll go to elliptical. I'll give you that round look. You see, you see here. So, the inside part relates to this color, and the outside relates to this darker gray color. And then you can play around with it from there. So, if I want to change this one to slightly darker, I'll click on that circle. I'll click on the color here, and then I'll mess around with it. And you see, it kind of changes it. And if I didn't want it to just stay like this, maybe I want it to be more dark on the inside, I could just drag this center tool here in. See that? 
So you can also add more points on this line. So I'll add another point there. Now you've got three points to deal with. And I'll just show you on here how it works. So there's the fill tool. Okay, here are your points. If I go back up here. Not sure why it's done that, but there you go, you've got three points. You see that's added it to here. So if I want to make this darker again, maybe like that, and then I can mess around so it's a bit more sort of harsh in, in that respect with those points. But anyway, I'll leave it as it is for now. So that's how you do the gradient tool, make it a little bit more round if you look. There you go. All right. Um, now on, I'll chuck in a few layers now. So I'm going to create another shape. This time I will choose. I'll choose the polygon tool because I want to make the part where you stick the Allen key or something like that. All right. So I've chose the polygon tool. I'll draw it over here so I can see what it's like. Hold down shift to make sure it's uh, the aspect ratio is correct. So obviously it's used all the settings I've uh, been messing around with before. So I'll just get rid of uh, the stroke, none. I'll get rid of this gradient and just make it a solid color. Um, there we go. I'll make it quite dark. There you go. So that's that shape now, but I want it a few more. I want a few more sides to this shape, this polygon. So if you go up here, so once you've selected your polygon, you go up to this section here, and this is where you can play around with it a little bit more. So I was choosing like uh, six sides. That's what I like. You can choose all kinds of sides, see? All kinds of shapes, but we'll go for six, yeah? All right. I'll turn it around a, a little bit. And there we go. Simply chuck it on here and you can play around with it so it can get kind of to the center of the image. Do you see that happened? Bang, now I know it's in the center. I want to nest this shape in the rest of it. So I'll go over to here to the polygon and I will drag it down to the right. See how that's happened? Now it's part of that shape. So if you see now, if I click on the, the polygon, I can move it and it won't come out of the sides. It's locked in there. I like that. That's cool. That really helped a lot when making my design. There you go. I'll leave it in the center there. All right. What if I want to add a, like a few more light, te uh, like shading or sort of like a reflection? Okay. So I've still selected the polygon shape and I'll make a new one from there. And from here on in, everything I make will be nested as long as it, you're within this kind of section here. So let's say I want to make a, a shape, just like a little reflection of light off of the, like a metallic sort of uh, screw. All right, so I'll get rid of this end by pressing Alt. So Alt and click will bring that to a full stop. So there's no more curve. I'll just click this side now, and there we go. There we go. I want to make that shape white now. So I'll fill, color, I'll go to swatches, I'll just make it pure white. There you go. Now I want to make it blurred. So I'll give it a Gaussian blur to give it more that more realistic effect. So right click, I'll bring this menu up, press layer effects, select Gaussian Blur, and then you can mess around with it. You see how it changes? All right, I'll just a little bit, there we go. That'll do, close that. So now you can see, obviously that doesn't look too good, actually I'm gonna play around with that a bit. So if you wanna play around with shapes you've just created on the little points, you choose this tool here, the Node tool, and you can do as you please with that one. So, there you go, I'll make that, there you go, I'm happy with that. 
and you can, you know, if you wanted to add that, uh, more of these reflections, you just make more shapes and do that. Sometimes I'd uh, just copy and paste, so I'd go here, Command C, that copies it, Command V, that's pasted it. So I've got two there now. So I'm drag that extra one I've made and stick it somewhere else. Uh, I'll drag it down the bottom. Do you want to draw this out too long? But you can see, you can kind of see how it works. And if I wanted to add more shady parts as well, I just do the same thing again. I just go make a shape like this. There we go. Okay, I've made another shape. I'll fill it, make it dark. There we go, I've made it dark. Okay, cool, that looks good. Right click again, Gaussian blur. You can go up as much as you want. I reckon like that. Close. There we go. And you can see you can keep playing around like that until you're happy with it. Uh, lots of different layers, lots of different shapes. And that's that one. So that's one of the techniques I wanted to show you about the gradient, the nesting, making reflections, and so on. If you remember on the bike, I had. Uh, the front and back uh, disc brakes, they were shapes that had holes inside of them. Uh, and I just wanted to quickly show you how to do that. I know other people have probably made videos on this, but um, I just want to make sure it was all in this one. Uh, you know, as you can see, things I've done on the bike design. So, choose a shape, make the shape. I'll give it a stroke. And I'll just fill it with, I don't know, grey. <clears throat> Actually, I'll make this stroke a little bit smaller. All right, so I want to make holes in this. I want to break it up a little bit. So I'll just grab, um, I'll just grab some other little circles and I'll do them in here. So here we go. I'll just make a few of them around here, just so you can see. Imagine this is like that disc break. Alright, so I've made all these uh, extra holes here. So, here's my main shape and here's all the holes I want to cut out of it. So, I select everything, select it all, and then you go up here and it says add. No, I don't want to do that. I want to subtract them. So I press subtract and now it's made holes in them. And uh, to prove that, I'll just um, I'll just make another shape in the background so you can see. Uh, I'll just make this a different color. There we go. So I'll just drag that one behind, and you can see I can see through it, and that's pretty cool. And so on my uh, disc brake, um, so on the inside I had. Uh, I had to sort of change the circle a little bit, so uh, I'll show you uh, how I did that. So I'll get another, I'll get another one, and I'll just make a circle inside here. And I will choose this. I'll select all of them again and subtract. Okay, so I've got another hole in here. Uh, if you want to change um, and add more curves to a shape you've just made, you can you can press this one here. So convert to curves. All right, so now I've converted to curves. I can go to the node tool again, and I can select different areas. So I'll just put a couple of points here. And you can drag it out, you see? Now you can mess around with that circle you made. So imagine this is the part where the disc brake uh, attaches to uh, disc brake holder, whatever the hell you call it. There you go. There you go. So you can change any part of the shape you want just by uh, adding parts to it. You see, whatever. 
you've got to be careful that it doesn't mess up your original shape. Uh, that's why you generally say I've got a point there, I'll put a couple of points on the side and I'll just drag that so it won't disrupt the rest of it. Okay, another thing I found uh, useful for all kinds of shapes is the corner tool. So right now we have uh, we have this square. Okay, and I want to make that side curved. Um, so you'd go over here and use this corner tool. See here? Let me select that shape again. So use this corner tool. You go over here. If you just wanted one side, you just literally click and drag across. You see? It just makes it, well, it gives it that curve. If I want to do all of them at the same time, I literally just keep my finger on shift and I just select all the points I want to be doing that. So I can do all four, so it's like this. See I can make it I can make it a circle from a square. Or you just go out. If you just wanted ones like three sides, you could just do that. So you see you it's uh, it's really useful and you can use that on any corner. <laughs> It's uh yeah it's a decent decent way of getting around uh, little problems. Uh, this was really useful for me as well. And then obviously um, I could go back to the cursor and then I could convert it to curves to do even more customize customization on it. So I could just go go to the node tool and I could start adding more points if I wanted. So. That's one cool way of uh, messing around with shapes. Okay, so I have uh, part of the engine from the bike I was making before, and uh, I just wanted to touch upon the uh, conical sort of gradient tool, uh, which helped me make this uh, this kind of metallic uh, rim here. You see, so I've uh, copied and pasted it from my original design. Um, so we'll just go in, and I'll show you. Uh, each piece. Okay, so I had the main outer piece here, uh, just the dark, and so this is all nested within within this uh, layer here. All of this stuff, so none of it comes out. Um, all right, so let me go into this one here. So as you can see, this one, this is the conical sort of gradient tool, and if I get rid of all the other layers around it. I will be able to show you. Oops, I got rid of too much there. I'll be able to show you what it looks like on the inside. So, this outer part is actually like that. That's what's underneath. Uh, and I created it by going to. So, I made the circle as I was showing you earlier. I used a stroke around the circle, this black line. And I went to fill, and then instead of using elliptical or linear like I used before, I used conical. So it's like a cone. Um, and I added all of these uh, points on it here. So if I click on this, you'll be able to see all these different points around it. So you'll see this one. goes like this in a round circle. Um, when you first make it, I'll make one for you, you'll see that there's a, a definite line where the colors meet. So if I just quickly go and uh, create another one right next to it, let me move that across. Um, so I'll just create a circle here next to it. And just like before, I'll stick on the gradient, sorry, the, um, the stroke. And let's go for the fill, gradient, conical. All right. So if you wanted to add a point here, you'd probably end up changing the point first. You see there's this line. If you want it all to blend in nicely, like a cone, you've got to make sure that the other one is exactly the same color. Um, you can do this just by sight or by using the dripper tool. But let's just do it from sight for now. Uh, if I can. All right, there we go. That looks like it's blended in. Now you want to change the 
inner points to what you want to give it that kind of metal effect. So you see, I've added that point there, and I'll change this bit to another kind of gray. And I'll just keep adding little points around until I'm happy that it's making the kind of look that I want. So you just go to this tool here. So once you've selected uh, the fill tool, you can move it around actually on that line. So you see, and you just do it until you're happy with the outcome. Um, and then, like my original one, I drew a line around it. Let's just make that solid. So I've just made this, I'll make it a slightly lighter shape and make it slightly bigger. And you can see how it comes together to be like that. So within that one, on the original one, I just I actually used a linear gradient and I made it go something like that. And I can just mess around with that, turn it around so it looks like the light's coming from the top. Change that white a little bit. See, so it's starting to look a little bit more three dimensional now. Um, you know, also to get the uh, the reflections on the corners, I'd like I'd I'd make another uh, another shape. So I'd sort of copy and paste that shape and make it a little bit bigger behind. Let's just make it like that. Um, put none. I'll just make it white, like full on white. There you go. And I just stick that one behind. So you see it's coming out a little bit there. Let me just mess around with it to show you so I could make it smaller, like hide it behind there a little bit. So you see that could be like the reflection of the light um, on that metallic piece. And I'd right click, layer effects, Gaussian blur a little bit. There we go. You do the same for the uh, circle above as well. So it looks like it's part of the same piece. You just go Gaussian blur that a bit. So you see, it's starting to come together. Um, and that's pretty much how you do it. And you just keep doing layers upon layers of, uh, of all that. So I'll just get rid of these pieces I've made. <clears throat> Stick them all together. See, I just stick it behind. So you can see how it all came together. And you just add all these uh, other little sections as additional shapes. And uh, there you have it. Thanks for watching, everybody. I hope uh, my brief tutorials on how I did certain things uh, was slightly enlightening. Um, if you have any questions, post it in the comments uh, section below. Um, and check out artistright.com where you can see the bike in full quality with close-ups. Uh, also, I'll be adding in the description uh, Twitter and Instagram links if you want to follow development of some of my designs on there. Um, also, let me know if you have uh, other techniques that make things simpler for you in Affinity Designer. Um, always willing to learn, obviously. Um, so thanks for watching, guys, and hopefully I'll see you again on another video. Thanks.